podcast style today. For some reason, the uh, the camera is not following, not tracking. So what we're going to do is just go straight into um, <clears throat> the, my slides. <clears throat> Are you able to see it, Aspen? Well, I hope so. Yes, Doc. Okay, so today's going to be on uh, interferon or interferon, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it. It's a uh, drug that was discovered decades ago. They thought it was going to be a miracle drug. And for some people, it has been a miracle. <clears throat> it wasn't quite the miracle that they had hoped, uh, but it's uh, it's got some promise. It's been doing some good work in a lot of places. One of the areas that it does have promise now is um, COVID. So we'll talk about that. That's gonna be in the program for today. Um, <clears throat> before we go to the program, just some other content that we have available for you. Um, we, had a, we got a lot of good comments back about uh, fall injuries. It's interesting, a patient I saw yesterday was one of those um, uh, athletic male uh, patients that we talked about that, you know, you see all these pictures and all these videos about falls, they're talking about the elderly, elderly. Well, this, this gentleman was what in his, he was in his early 70s, but very athletic, cyclist, um, several other things. I mean, uh, very athletic uh, gentleman got up uh, one evening uh, to go to the, the bathroom, I think, and fell on his arm. So falls are a bigger deal than people think. They are the number one cause of trauma uh, in uh, the elderly, and they're a big deal for uh, the typical YouTube channel watcher for this channel, athletic uh, baby boomer males and females, but again, YouTube tends to be more of a YouTube, uh, a, a male uh, media. <clears throat> Heart disease in women, uh, the mode RNA vaccine. Uh, they, they did six years worth of development in six months. So are they going to do six more years in the next six? We will see. Repurposing old drugs like um, uh, the steroids, stem cells, possible cure for diabetes. Not quite ready for prime time. And again, saturated fats and reducing plaque buildup. Those last two are perennial favorites. Saturated fats was always a big deal. Uh, <clears throat> things have changed in that area, by the way. If you're still thinking they're bad, take a look at the science. And that's exactly what we talk about in that video. Uh, Aspen's working on a five minute version. We've got a 20 minute version out there that's been very popular and uh, reduction of plaque Again, always a big thing for our channel. Uh, we've done a lot of work this morning with Michelle and Janice and um, Sam and um, JR on developing the webinars. We're getting closer to having something that uh, makes a lot of sense. It's um, simple. It's easy. It focuses on what your doc doesn't do. Docs tend to not understand how to get an OGTT. They don't know what an N uh, inflammation panel is. They don't know what insulin uh, response for an OGTT is because they don't even know what an OGTT is. So we're focusing that uh, in one webinar where you can, uh, you pay us for our part or you can get the labs and we can help you get the labs and include that in the experience. Um, something similar with plaque, uh, setting it up where you can get a, a CIMT with us or uh, a calcium score or both. <clears throat> uh, we've submitted the book finally to the, um, to the publisher. It's been a long, painful process, but hopefully it'll help people get that message about, you know what? If you're worried about having a heart attack and stroke, don't go to your doc and say, can we just get a stress test? Of course, unless you're feeling lucky. But what, five to seven million people do that every year. So <clears throat> supplements always a, a very popular topic. It's true, you cannot supplement your way out of a lifestyle problem, but supplements 
if you look at the science, supplements do help in a lot of situations and are uh, a good bang for the buck. So a lot of people want to know a little bit more about folate, bergamot, uh, gymnema, vitamin K2, one of the big ones for, uh, for our channel, as well as berberine. Uh, more, uh, we had a couple more people sign up this week for the subscription plans. Those are um, very, very cost effective for folks to start getting a way to balance their budget on a monthly basis, uh, not break their bank, but st still be able to say, okay, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to take care of myself. Even if my doc doesn't know how to do some of the key components of cardiovascular prevention, heart attack, stroke prevention, dementia prevention, blindness, kidney disease prevention, I can get those done as well in a simple monthly subscription. And uh, check out the website. Sam has come on board. He's been with us for about a month and he's doing a lot of good work. Go to prevmedhealth.com. Okay, so <clears throat> as soon as, uh, as Aspen... So as we mentioned before, uh, interferon or interferon, I'm, I've used both terms, um, is, a, is a drug. It's actually like many drugs, it's a uh, protein which is developed by the body as response to viruses. When that was discovered originally, there was hope that we had discovered the answer to all viral illness. Obviously, that didn't happen. But as I said before, it has worked some miracles in some spaces. And interferon uh, beta has become the focus of intensifying efforts in Britain, China, and the U.S. to treat COVID-19. SARS-CoV-2, the current pandemic virus, blocks the body's natural interferon response and disarms the cells that would otherwise be alerting neighborhood cells to activate their own genes and fortify themselves against invading virus. In theory, administering interferon to patients could invigorate their defenses in the early stages of the illness, thereby preventing the bad part, the um, COVID-19 part of the, um, of the infection. Giving patients interferon beta without eliciting serious side effects, however, has proved to be a challenge. For example, for instance, the symptoms of seasonal flu are largely caused by the body's interferon response. Now there's three studies that we're looking at for this video. Study number one was in Cell Magazine. Study number two was in Lancet and study number three was in uh, MedRxIV. Cell Magazine uh, and Lancet are, Lancet are both globally recognized cell, one of the one of the top science magazines uh, in the world. Uh, study number one, Cell Magazine, the coronavirus is shown to block the body's interferon response. Co-author uh, Professor Benjamin uh, Tenever said that evidence was piling up that administering interferon could help limit the replication of the virus, especially in the early stages of illness. Fending the virus off for long enough that a second set of genes could successfully eradicated. In study number two, the Lancet, again, all of these were in May of this year, just a couple of months ago. The triple antiviral therapy with, with interferon beta 1b, lopinavir, and ritonavir, and uh, ribavirin were safe and superior to lopinavir, ritonavir alone in shortening virus shedding, alleviating symptoms, and facilitating discharge of patients with mild to moderate COVID-19. In study number three in the MedEx, in China, early results of a not yet peer-reviewed study among medical workers showed promise. Interferon nasal drops were, may effectively prevent COVID-19 in medical staff. Now, there's a British drug company. It's called Synergen. It developed an inhaled form of interferon beta to circumvent the side effects problem. Uh, the inhaled form directly targets cells in the lungs, which is 
where the action is with this virus as compared to an injection that produces more intense side effects and more of a systemic problem, uh, not so much focused on the lungs. <clears throat> Synergen conducted a small double-blind trial on COVID-19 patients hospitalized in nine British hospitals. Over the two-week treatment period, patients receiving the interferon beta drug were two times as likely as patients who received a placebo to recover to the point where they were no longer limited by their illness. Breathlessness was also lower in patients receiving the drug. Obviously, there are limitations, and obviously the biggest one was a very small trial and only one. This needs to be replicated many, many times before we can depend on it as a, um, as a potential solution. You can see on the right, by the way, that this was uh, an article from the New York Times. New treatment for COVID-19 shows promise, but scientists urge caution. The company also fell short of the number of patients that it intended to, roll, to enroll. The inhaled form was not yet licensed or widely available. Scientists believe the interferon drug will work most effectively on patients who are not yet seriously ill. And that's where a lot of the antiviral um, impacts work. You got to catch them early. And that is a problem. By contrast, another drug, the dexamethasone, the steroid that has been shown to help, helps severely ill patients. So you can give that to patients that already have a significant problem. So, um, Aspen, do you want to show the video? What we're going to do, Kay, is give you some from that research and replication now. That drug is interferon beta. A group of COVID-19 patients in the UK inhaled it directly into their lungs. <coughs> the study conducted by the drug company was small, just 101 patients, but the preliminary results seem promising. They claim patients who received the drug lowered their risk of becoming more seriously ill by almost 80% and more than doubled their chances of recovering. They were also released from hospital after an average of six days instead of nine. This could be a big step forward in treating COVID-19, but the actual data behind those findings has not been released by the drug company or reviewed by other scientists. Larger trials are needed, but Canadian researchers say this drug could work. Regardless of what the virus is, whether it's a respiratory one, it's through a mosquito bite, the very first thing your body does is make interferon. When a virus enters a cell, our immune system produces interferon molecules to interfere with the virus's ability to copy itself. But this coronavirus is able to get rid of them, which is why added doses could help. Drugs similar to the one tested are used to treat liver infections and even cancer. But doctors say there are drawbacks. The reason people don't jump to use it immediately is it's kind of nonspecific. It's like turning on the whole defense system to block one bullet. Which can lead to serious side effects. By inhaling interferon directly into the lungs, many hope it will be more targeted. The virus. The drug maker is preparing to show its trial data to regulators. When we've talked to them, We'll work out what gaps there are in the data package and we'll look to fill those gaps and, and work towards getting this drug approved. Yeah. Thereby repurposing an old drug to fight a brand new virus. Christine Birak, CBC News, Toronto. So we're going to have some um, uh, some Q and A. Uh, Aspen has I don't know if the uh, if the camera is working yet or not. Carol, if you're out there, I got the green screen set up. It was working on the good on the uh, Canon ADD, but our connections aren't working. The computer isn't working. So we tried resetting it. We tried going out of the studio back in. Uh, taking the computer down and back up. It's a software problem that for a couple of months was happening every time we set up. Then it quit. So welcome to the world of ghosts in the machine. And yes, uh, Chuck Rogers, here we go. My BJJ, good morning from Temecula, California. John Tocho, good morning. 
your thoughts on the Russian vaccine. I don't really have uh, significant thoughts on the Russian vaccine at this point. I'd love to hear what they have to say about it. I have to admit, I've been uh, up to here working on, we've been doing some work on getting some schools back to uh, back to school. And I have to tell you, I think the, I don't know that I've shared this, but um, I think the back to school uh, efforts are go going the same way that the back to work efforts are going. A lot of schools um, with this second wave, as most of us know, this effort to get uh, people back to work, but mostly dried up for people that didn't have to work for non-essential jobs. Um, we, with the, we pivoted with our consulting group and started working with a lot of schools. A lot of schools were already committed. Um, even though they were committed, I could tell you from the, um, from the work we were doing, I became very skeptical a month ago that any schools were going to be able to open and remain functional. And as many of you have been seeing over the past month, more and more schools have been closing and delaying again. So um, again, I've been focused on that. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of information to provide on the Russian vaccine. John Tocho had a calcium uh, test, 71 calcium score at age 67. John, I'm jealous. That is excellent. I had a 99 to 100, uh, two, what, two years ago when I was 61. So Again, I had, I was a 10 and a half pound baby with 9P21. It's the, the heart attack gene. It's also the prediabetes gene and um, several other risk factors for diabetes. Uh, being overweight was not one of them, though. I'm jealous. Using a CGM, continuous glucose monitoring, Freestyle Libre, 71 this morning. Highest reading the last three days has been 88. Well, you know what? It's no wonder your calcium score is 71. You, it looks like you've got a rock solid uh, glucose metabolism. And don't forget Patreon. Thank you so much, uh, John. And Aspen, if you could, uh, there you go. Great. Uh, as you see, Aspen just popped right up there when he heard the word Patreon. And that's how to donate. Um, Patreon, PayPal, or YouTube Live. <clears throat> Okay, and hopefully by the next uh, YouTube Live, we'll get this software glitch out of the uh, the camera. Average bodybuilder, I don't think I've seen that name much. Lloyd Wright has elucidated his experience with interferons when he was suffering from hep C, not a good experience. Yep, we mentioned several times that it's like cutting off all, going into major defense systems uh, only for one item. Side effects are an issue, a big issue. Westfield 90, so many promising treatments appear almost weekly, but nothing seems to be stopping this down. Um, <clears throat> no, I, I agree. I will say this though, human beings are a very smart species, comparatively speaking. And um, I do think it makes sense to avoid getting infected. Each month you avoid getting infected is another month that um, effective vaccines, ev effective treatments um, can be discovered. And um, <clears throat> I know there are a lot of vaccine haters out there. Every time I do a vaccine uh, video, we'll get a bunch of vaccine haters. They'll come on, they'll make, make yeah, politically or not the greatest comments. And we, I have to learn who's, who's who and avoid them. But um, the vaccines are a bigger hope for us than anything else. It's so infectious, we're not likely to, uh, to continue to remain um, uh, for the next three years indefinitely uh, at lower levels of infection. The only way we're gonna get uh, to uh, a herd immunity is 40, 50, 60% uh, of us infected, and we don't want to go that route. That is a huge cost. Robert Simpson, what, uh, what is a good amount of supplements that any one person can take without overdoing? It? Is there such a thing as taking too many? Well, of course there is. For example, uh, 
we've had a video uh, where a lady took way too many vitamin D3. The biggest one, the biggest danger of the supplements in terms of taking too much is vitamin D3. It has killed people. It has wrecked their kidneys. Uh, the lady that I saw, and um, we have the video, it's available to you, did one of these things. Um, vitamin D3 is given in some forms where you can give it in 25,000 and 50,000 units. Those are meant to be given once a week. This patient uh, was seeing a doctor and was given that dosage, didn't realize it was once a week and was taking 50,000 a day. I can't remember right now what her level was, but it was like 135, 140, it was way too high. And yes, we did do some kidney function tests and yes, she had some kidney function problems. They did uh, return to normal. Now that's the, the biggest one though, um, vitamin D3. It's also one of the most important supplements. As you know, it's gotten a lot of really good reviews regarding, um, regarding COVID, COVID-19 and prediabetes and some other areas. So <clears throat> it's something you clearly don't want to ignore. Uh, I will tell you one other thing regarding vitamin D3. I've never seen anyone get um, into trouble starting with 5,000 international units. 5,000 international units. The, um, the final thing I would say is that's clearly an area to test, don't guess. If Go ahead and supplement, but be sure and get your vitamin D3 levels. Heather Michelle ba Baston. Hi, Dr. Brewer. Hello, hello, Heather. ZV1, catch them early. How, how about 98%, 80? Joe, is that you? Uh, <clears throat> Dennis Williamson, Deus X machine. <laughs> I think you're making a comment about my machine, and I, I've uh, I've used some other language uh, to describe this machine too, Dennis. And my BJJ five dollars. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, again, Aspen, if you don't mind, just showing how folks how BJJ did that. On the bottom there, it says donate through YouTube Live. If you go down to the section where it says to make a comment. Right next to it's a little uh, icon with a dollar sign. Uh, BJJ, it makes a big difference. Um, Five dollars uh, for us is a, uh, you know, it's a Starbucks, it's a cup of coffee. But uh, a lot of our staff uh, works and lives in uh, the Philippines. Very, very different economy. So five dollars makes a big, big difference. Thank you so much. Um, for pre-diabetics, it makes sense occasionally give keto the beta cells a restorative breather. Is it possible to lose beta cell function from inactivity, sort of atrophy, if we say keto for too long? That's a great question. You know, with most uh, body tissues, it's a use it or lose it type of thing. But uh, you can also wear something out as well. And as we, as our uh, receptors to insulin in our muscles and uh, liver cells become resistant, resistant to insulin, we begin to just have to push all day, 24-7. I'll see, see patients with a, <clears throat> a basal insulin rate. I saw one with a basal insulin rate of 11 yesterday, and uh, the optimum is five or less. So as you see, even when it was, quote, not working, uh, his, his pancreas was doing uh, double time. It was not resting. And so it didn't get a chance to, to get better. I'm talking about the other side of this issue. Let me go back and answer your specific question. I've never seen it where if you give somebody's pancreas a break by going keto. And what you're saying here, BJJ, for the others is, you know what? You stop taking the carbs. You stop eating carbs. You don't uh, have a, a reason to get that insulin push. So you're giving those beta cells in the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas, you're giving those cells a break. I've never seen that cause um, loss of beta cell function. I have many times seen improvement of beta cell function, but I've never seen loss of beta cell function from uh, cutting the carbs. <clears throat> ZV1, 
I've never been killed by a virus I didn't catch. <laughs> That's uh, so true. And that is the most effective thing that we have right now. I think. Thank you for pointing it out. And um, we're still doing social isolation. I still plan to continue doing social isolation until uh, until we've got an effective protection through other means. They call me Carl. Rich people are so funny. Didn't get that one. Uh, Robert Simpson, D3 testing is good. I would agree, Robert. Thank you so much for the comment. And uh, ZV1. I'm beginning, I'm, be I'm beginning to wonder if that's uh, our friend Joe. I think he used to be ZV5 before. Um, we've had uh, a good attendance. Not a whole lot of comments. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and finish this out unless someone else. Here we go. We had... Another comment regarding vitamin D. This is anecdotal, but I take 5,000 international units of D3 daily. I had COVID-19 and very mild symptoms for two days. I actually, this is an interesting story, BJJ. And it, I'll just remind you, Joe Riley sent me the studies and a couple of other studies. I think, I think it might've been done in the Philippines and a couple of studies have uh, been done to confirm people that had low levels of vitamin D3 had a much higher COVID-19 rate and a much higher mortality rate, much higher, as in like 90, 10 kind of thing. Had COVID-19, back to BJJ's comments, had COVID-19 and very mild symptoms for two days. Uh, BJJ, if you don't mind sharing how old you were, that would be very helpful as well. I actually up to 7,000 units when I became symptomatic. Great idea. And to your point, um, I would, as I said before, I've reviewed the science specifically for this question. What level of uh, vitamin D is safe to take even without testing? And I've never seen any, any evidence of anybody having a problem taking it 5,000. So that is such a big deal right now, especially in the age of COVID. And thank you so much, my BJJ, for sharing that. ZV1, JR, Joe Riley, thank you, Joe. John Tocho, thank you. Thank you for sharing, John. And thank you for, for your contributions to the channel. Jonathan Hull, do you recommend the 25 hydroxy vitamin D test? Yes, it's uh, the vitamin D3 test. I do. I mean, that's what we were saying. Te uh, that's clearly an area where tests don't guess. Robert Simpson, my doctor says that IF, oh, if I get COVID, age 67, his therapy for me to start would be steroids and antibiotic. Well, I'd make... I would start. I would start now making sure that you're getting the 5,000 international units of vitamin D3. I would also make sure, you know, as you've seen, uh, hyper old age. We can't change our age, and I don't, you know, sixty-seven is not uh, incredibly old for uh, COVID nineteen. The folks that are in real danger in the seventies, eighties, um, also having prediabetes. And guess what? Having prediabetes increases every decade of our life to where. We used to think, if you read um, uh, Blood Sugar 101 by uh, Jenny Rule, R-U-H-L, you would see plenty of evidence that we used to think that once we reached eight, our 60s, half of us had prediabetes. The reality is it's much, much higher than that. So, Robert, unless you know exactly for sure, unless you've had an OGTT, a Kraft Insulin Survey, unless you've used CGM, like John Tucho talked about, continuous glucose monitoring, unless you know for sure that you're not pre-diabetes, uh, pre-diabetic, that is the other major risk that you've got. And how do you deal with that? That's what this whole channel is about. My BJJ, I'm 53 years old. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, very interesting story. Robert Simpson, 
I am getting the D3. I would too, Robert. And in fact, I already had. I take 5,000 daily. And yes, I have had testing. Um, <clears throat> at one point, I made a mistake. You know how you separate your pills out into these little daily pill things? And I was taking pills and supplements in the morning and at night. And I made a mistake for a couple of months. I was putting the 5,000 D3 in the morning and the night pill. And I did get an increase. Usually I hang around the 60s in terms of my vitamin D3 level. I got up to 90, uh, 93, 95 when I was uh, mistakenly taking 10,000 units per day. I discovered that, backed off, and I'm back down to the 60s. And again, if you go back and you look at the FDA numbers, they would say 25 to 40. A lot of the labs would say 25 to 40. I shoot for 60 to 80. Um, and I haven't seen significant, by the way, haven't seen significant damage uh, under 105 and closer to 115 is where you really start getting into the danger area. So thank you, Robert Simpson, for bringing this up. That makes me feel good. My A1C is down to 5.2. That's great. A1C is a great way to follow it on a regular basis, but I'm not the only one who has said A1C is not a great way to diagnose it. The, um, the endocrinology, uh, the College of Endocrinology has said the same thing. And it's because it varies too much. Um, the average cell life of your red cells um, impacts A1C. If you've not had, I'll go back and say it again. You remember when uh, I, I listed this before, A1C was not one of the things I listed. If you've not had an oral glucose tolerance test, OGTT, if you've not had a craft insulin survey or uh, insulin response to an OGTT, if you've not used uh, CGM, continuous glucose monitoring, you really don't know. Uh, with an A1C as low as 5.2, you got a good guess. But again, it's a guess. It's not a, it's not clarity until you've had these other things done. So thank you, Robert, for uh, helping us tease out some of these issues on the number one killer, the number one disabler, prediabetes. They call me Carl. Okay, no disrespect, Doc, but in regards to COVID-19, you're living in a rich people bubble. Um, Carl, I'm not sure I want to go there. Of, of course I'm living, I, I'm extremely uh, fortunate. I've worked very hard all my life. I haven't spent a lot of money. I was able to get into medical school and et cetera, et cetera, and I'm retired. But my son, for example, works, gets up and goes to work every day in a meat department at Kroger in retail. So does his girlfriend. And so do a lot of other people that I, I live and, and work with. So um, I don't know how you can say that with, well, John Tocho, I've listened to Dr. Burr for the last few years and try to keep my carbs to 20 grams per day, sometimes creep up to 50 grams. John, I tend to be more on the creeping up to 50 grams. Uh, so I'm impressed with your discipline. So thank you, Dr. Brewer, for all you do on this channel. Thank you so much, John, for uh, the contributions you've made in terms of both, uh, content as well. I, when you share that, it's very, very helpful. Joe, is 10,000 every other day the same? Yes, it is. Um, Art Berry, almost two thirds of the people in New York State that got in New York State that got COVID-19 were the ones that stayed home, maybe vitamin D related, less sun. Uh, it's good, quite a good point. Thank you for sharing that. I'd love to see the, I'd love to see the, the, um, the link on that art. That's very interesting. Dennis Williamson, my vitamin D3 scored below 30. Ooh, at 5,000 international units. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Dennis. An ideal score of 60 still needs to account for active one to, uh, 125 dihydroxy. Yeah, there's two, there's two types of vitamin D. There's D3 and then there's D2. D2 is very, very weak 
in comparison to D3. And a lot of people have tried using D2 because they felt it was safer. <clears throat> it's much less likely to have an impact. Uh, I tend to, I advise my, my patients and I personally ignore D2 because again, it is so much weaker. Um, and, but you bring up a great point, Dennis. Uh, a lot of people don't get enough uh, enough of an impact with 5,000 international units. Some people have to take a lot more to get where they need to be. And you're obviously one of them. Thank you so much for sharing that. My BJJ, again, anecdotal, but in addition to the vitamin D3, I run for an hour daily in the heat of the day to max natural vitamin D and other benefits. I continued this when symptomatic. Whoa, but decided to walk briskly. Well, yeah, I, I will. Let me just say this uh, regarding the sun piece. I, you know, I, I do this for a living. I see patients with this and we measure vitamin D3. I recommend that for all my patients. I recommend that for everybody. And you hear this story about it's the sunshine vitamin. And you hear people say, you don't have to worry about taking supplements. You just go out in the sun. I classically get these couples where the they're retired, the husband's out playing golf all day, four times a week, three or four hours. The wife never goes out. She's got a great vitamin D and he's got a terrible one. So, and, and the other thing is you hear, oh, if you live above the Mason Dixon line or some other, uh, uh, latitude line in the U.S., you're okay. Mm. Or, or, I mean, if you live above it, you're or north of it, you've got risk. If you're south of it, you don't. Also, not true. This, yes, sun, sunshine is an issue for it, but do not depend on sunshine. Uh, test, don't guess. Thanks again, Dennis Williams. UVB exposure will allow for one. 25 dihydroxy D without artificial supplementation. And I guess I don't need to repeat what I just said. Thank you. Anecdotally. Thank you guys. I appreciate your interest and um, we will uh, see you again next time.